everyone. Thanks for tuning in again to Clearwater Marine Aquarium's virtual field trips. Today, we're going to talk about a big part of our mission, rescue. We're going to talk about the types of animals that we rescue, why they might need rescuing, and what to do if you come upon a stranded animal. So first, let's take a look at all the different types of animals that Clearwater Marine Aquarium rescues. see we rescue cetaceans, sea turtles, North American river otters, assist with manatee rescues, and even rescue smaller animals like seahorses. Now one of the main reasons that we need to rescue an animal is when they become stranded. Do you know what stranded means? Well this is when a marine animal is on the beach or is in the water and is unable to return to the water because of a sickness, injury, or for some other obstacle. Now there's two main reasons or categories why an animal may strand. One is natural disturbances. So this is something that just naturally happens in their habitat. And the other is human disturbances. So this would be something that humans have caused them to have problems. So there's four main natural reasons I wanna to talk to you about. One could be a harmful algal bloom. So this would be like red tide, which could cause respiratory issues for animals. Two, diseases. Just like diseases spread in humans, they can also spread in animals. Three, they do have natural predators. So for dolphins, it could be something like sharks. And lastly, cold stress. Although you might not think it gets very cold here in Florida, the waters here do get cold enough that it's a problem for animals such as manatees and sea turtles who are unable to live in very cold water. Now besides these natural disturbances, there's also human disturbances. So one of those could be pollution or marine debris. So we have had dolphins that we've had to rescue that were wrapped in packaging tape. We've also rescued a sea turtle that was completely attached to a fishing rod. So these are reasons why they may need to come in. Secondly, a animal may be because of a human related if they were being fed by a human. So we really discourage you to feed any animals in the wild. It's actually illegal to feed dolphins and that's because humans probably aren't feeding them the diet that they need. It can cause them to get really sick. And in addition, dolphins may start to associate boats with food, which would lead to our final one. They could be more susceptible to boat strikes. So that's another reason why we may need to intervene with these animals.
So now you know why we respond and some reasons that would cause an animal to be stranded, but how about when do we respond? Well, our rescue team here monitors the hotline 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, because we never know when there may be an animal in need. So if you've seen Dolphin Tale 2 in the movie, they're at Sawyer's going away party when they get the call that Hope needs rescuing. Well, that is a little true. In real life, they were at the wrap party of Dolphin Tail 1 when they received that phone call um, that Hope was going to need to be rescued. So then they went, and that just goes to show you that it could happen at any time, even like Nicholas, who was rescued on Christmas Eve. So now that you know when we monitor, why do we do this? Well, we're a rescue hospital, so our mission here is to rescue, rehabilitate, and hopefully release these animals back into the wild. So this is to help with their wild population and hopefully to prevent extinction from occurring with any of these animals. Okay, so now, what would happen if you came upon a stranded animal? Well, first, remember you learned that this animal is likely injured or sick, so you never want to push this animal back into the water. The first thing you should do is call your local wildlife rescue facility, like Clearwater Marine Aquarium. They'll want to know your exact location, any information you can give about the animal, and then maybe some pictures from a distance if they instruct you to do so. The next thing you need to do while you wait is cry. The best thing you can do now is to keep anyone away from this animal to protect the animal until our rescue team comes. Now let's go see what the rescue team would be preparing to come on the scene. So we're here at our rescue truck, and as you can see, we have a few different equipment items that we have ready to go in any case. So this right here is just caution tape, but like we mentioned, you would want to do some crowd control while you're waiting for the rescue team to come on site. We also need to do crowd control when we arrive. We typically assign one to two people just to make sure that all non-rescue personnel are kept a safe distance away from the animal. It's important for the people because these animals, remember, are wild animals. They can be very strong and weigh a lot. And we, it's also important for the animals. We want to make sure that our noise levels are down and just to keep people away during that time. So right here, what we have is a sprayer. Dolphins shed their skin about every two to three hours, which is nine times faster than a human would shed their skin. Now they have this special adaptation to help them with swimming quickly through the water as shedding their skin causes their skin to be very smooth and reduces the drag on their body. While this special adaptation helps them with swimming, it doesn't help them so much out of the water. Water acts as a natural sunscreen for the dolphin, so when the animal is out of the water, it's important that we keep their skin moist to prevent sunburns. Now on that same turn, we also have towels, sheets, or sometimes we can use different beach furniture, um, like tents, to keep them in the shade. Again, very important that we keep the animal in the shade. Now, if you remember from anatomy, there's one place where we might not want to have this over. Remember, dolphins are mammals just like us, so they breathe air and they breathe out of their blowhole. So you want to make sure that we don't have this towel or blankets or anything covering their blowhole. Now, what you'll also see here is a stretcher. This is just an example of a type of stretcher do have stretchers different sizes for different animals and this is what we would use to bring the animal into the truck. Now with this truck we do have something really unique and this is an easy lift system so it's basically like a mini crane. This can come back all the way up and then we'd be able to use that clip to bring the animal up and into the truck because remember they can weigh a lot. So besides the equipment you see here, there are several other things that we do have. Our vet's kit that makes sure they have everything ready to help test the animal and make sure they're ready to go. And then also data collection is very important during this time. Someone is always assigned with a stopwatch and a clipboard to make sure that they're taking observations of the animal. So they're watching their respirations, which is how often the animal is breathing. And they may be asked upon for this information. They're also recording anything that may, um, is happening during the rescue. In addition, we also may have a camera so we can take pictures of the animal, anything that may be interesting, any entanglements, um, and just generally documenting the situation. 
Now that you've learned about our equipment, let's take a look at one of our more recent rescue stories, Rudolph, a rough-toothed dolphin. While you're watching the video, take a look and see what other equipment you might see. Rudolph was transported to our off-site CMA rehab facility. check out on our website. Now that you've learned all about our rescue team, what types of animals we rescue, and why these animals need to be rescued, it's your turn to practice a rescue at home. Go to the website to download the instructions to practice your rescue at home. Thanks and tune in again.